हरे कृष्ण एवरी वन वेलकम टू सोल ब्लेस इंक्रीजिंग योर मैग्नेटिज्म सपोज सम वन पिंचज यू फर्स्ट यू फील अ फिजिकल सेंसेशन फ्रॉम द स्टूमलाई ऑफ द सेंसेशन कम्स परसेप्शन देन हैविंग परसीव द सेंसेशन योर माइंड फॉर्म्स द थाट आई हैव बिन पिंच दैट इज कंसेप्शन द प्रोसेस फ्रॉम sensation to perception to conception is an individualized response because the inner being and working of each person is unique the sum total of his reactions to any given experience will be different from that of any other persons this totality of what you are inside your thoughts feelings responses motivations determines the quality of your magnetism your power of attraction magnetism is the greatest force through which you can draw unto yourself friends and good will like to be noticed no one wants to feel ignored or forgotten even a child will deliberately act up to get attention we also like to be thought well of we want others to like us but how many of us give to others the understanding and consideration we think we merit from them we express the greatest compassion and forgiveness toward our own weaknesses while all too readily we criticize and condemn others for their faults can we as easily stand up before others and tell all our own faults since childhood no but unless we learn to behave we can't show others how to behave and have no rights to be intolerant of their shortcomings The world is full of those who want to reform others but not themselves unless we develop a constructive critical estimate of ourselves we will go on year after year unchanged what is important is self reform for if we ourselves have reformed we shall reform thousands by our example example does speak louder than words how to become a king of hearts loved by all become more saintly so that like a true king you sit on the throne of love in the hearts of others begin by being kind to all unkindness is a spiritual disease if you indulge in unkind acts and feelings you make yourself miserable and damage your nervous system when you see others behaving unkindly it should give you greater determination to be kind i practice this all the time no matter how hurtfully others behave they cannot make me react with meanness the more unkindness people show to me the more understanding i give to them sometimes in order to stress an important lesson i speak very strongly to those who have come to me for training but i'm never angry or unkind those who received such discipline have seen that at height of the scolding when i seem to be more displeased i can shut off fiery speech and use the gentlest of words that self control has tremendous power never allow your voice to be harsh out of anger or vengefulness flower shed petals of kindness when you are aggravated by others or attacked by the evil in them by self control and right behavior you will ultimately realize that you are a part of the eternal good you do not belong any more to the wrong ways of this world the inner self must be cultivated to be truly attractive you must be attractive mentally and spiritually as well as physically the present generation links attractiveness to the style shops and salons but beauty has to be more than external You can be looking at the most handsome man and the most beautiful woman in the world yet right beneath their pleasing appearance you may discover much hidden ugliness they are like the magnificent sarcophagi from the tombs of ancient egypt how beautiful how perfect the carved images look but when you lift the cover you find nothing beautiful in the dead form within If the spiritual qualities of a true soul nature are dead an attractive physical body is little more than a casket to hold the inner withered consciousness it is fortunate of course that some physical attractiveness covers the ugliness of our bones sinews and internal organs but why be so preoccupied year after year in adorning only the outer form America seems very much a place where people concentrate on keeping up their outer image 
in order to hide their age. I have seen many people looking 40 who feel really 60 and that is good. Why shouldn't you keep the body fit and attractive? You can make your body whatever you want it to be. Why be careless and let it go to pot as they say. Watch your weight if your form is disproportionate. It is most likely because of laziness or overeating. Some people diet of fast one day and then more than make up for it the next day. Get plenty of exercise and learn to be more careful about what you eat. But such are the infinite potentials of life. So much to learn and to do that if you are primarily intent on enhancing your physical being, you won't have time to do anything to improve yourself inwardly. Beautifying oneself before the mirror, painting the face, coloring the hair may help one to be noticed in the business or social world. And there is nothing wrong with that but it will not improve the inner personality, the inner self. My point is that you have to give some time to the inner self also. In the East, the concentration is mostly upon inner attractiveness and in the West more emphasis is placed on the physical attractiveness. What is necessary is a combination of both. I would rather be mentally attractive than physical attractive. But if I can be both, that is even better. We must learn to simplify the externals of our life and take time to beautify our inner self. That is the way to develop true magnetism. You might be quite conscious of someone's homeliness at first meeting and then realize that his inner personality is very attractive and magnetic. Socrates was like that, so was Lincoln. They had a magnetism bond of beautiful inner qualities that drew others to them. They had a magnetism bond of beautiful inner qualities that drew others to them. When you have that kind of divine attractiveness, the physical features are of less importance. Your physical appearance, especially the eye shows more or less what you were like in previous life so deeply does the inner being impinge on the outer form. The eyes are one's most significant physical feature. You should learn to make your eyes beautiful. How? The eyes clearly reflect what you are within. So, there is but one method that can beautify the life and expression in the eyes, the inner cultivation of beautiful thoughts and feelings. Some eyes are very cruel, others are mean or selfish. No matter how sweet such person's words or actions are, you can see what he is really like through the expression of the eyes. He cannot hide himself behind those open windows. So think wholesome thoughts, constructive thoughts, as a being privileged to be made in God's image, you have no right to disfigure your inner life. Develop peaceful eyes, calm eyes, strong eyes, divinely loving eyes by cultivating these qualities within. By this method alone you can develop an inner attractiveness that completely transcends the limitations of physical appearance. Please like the video, subscribe the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Thank you.